Well, amen. What a night it's been so far, huh? But uh, we sure got a lot of problems in the world, don't we? We've got wars everywhere. We have the social ills that plague our country, poverty, disease, famine, different things like that. Of course, with all the natural disasters that have been going on. But behind it all, and not to get too ominous, but there's a much darker force working, and there's a much deeper problem that rarely is addressed, and that's the problem of sin. If you go before the United Nations, we're not going to talk about them tonight, and you said, gentlemen, I believe the, world, the world's problem is really sin. You'd be laughed off the stage, wouldn't you? Because nobody wants to acknowledge that the problem of the world is sin. Well, I believe very firmly that the main problem in the world is sin today, and I believe very firmly that if we're going to find an answer, it's going to be here in God's Word. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk about sin. So first of all, if we're going to talk about it, we need a definition, don't we? We need to figure out what it is. People say, stealing sin, lying sin, but what is really sin? So what does the Bible say about this? The Bible tells us, first of all, what we do that is wrong is sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 4 says, For he that whosoever committeth sin transgresseth all transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. I don't think anybody would agree with that. Sin is doing bad. But sin is also what we don't do that is right. James chapter 4, verse number 17 tells us, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. But not only is sin what we do that is wrong, or sin is not, not only is sin what we don't do that is right, but sin is human goodness without God. Proverbs chapter 21, verse number 4 tells us, A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Well, the first two we can understand, the high look and a proud heart, right? That's sin. But the plowing of the wicked, that's sin? What, what is that? A man's out there on his tractor plowing the field. That's sin? According to the Bible it is, because human goodness, anything done without God, is sin. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6 tells us, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6 does not say, but all our iniquities are as filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 6 says, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You have to understand that mankind is inherently evil, and everything he touches is contaminated. Some of you don't get it. You say, well, my good works are good. Well, they're not. They're not really. Well, let's use a fruit salad. Your neighbor invites you over for dinner, and he has this nice fruit salad he's preparing, but he's mixing it with his hands. It wouldn't be so bad, except his hands are covered in open running sores. And then he serves, sets it down on the table and says, eat up. How many of you are going to eat that fruit salad? You're not. What? Nothing wrong with the apples. Nothing wrong with the grapes or the, or the pears. Why? Because it's contaminated. And so does the wicked contaminate everything he touches. You say, why do you tell me this tonight? I tell you this to show you that you're a sinner. Because God wants every one of us to see that we're a sinner. When you go to a doctor, does the doctor hand you medications? When you walk in, does he hand you medications say, here you go, go home and take it? No, that'd be foolish. Why? He has to make a diagnosis first. That's what God wants to do tonight. He wants to make a diagnosis and show, that you, show you that you're a sinner. Which you are, because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse number 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God takes sin very seriously. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You say, well, why does it matter? Okay, I'm a sinner, and we all are sinners. But why does it matter? Well, let's look at number two. We have the definition of sin. We have the danger of sin. First of all, sin deceives. Sin deceives. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 13 tells us, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin will lie to you and tell you it's all right. One more time won't hurt anything. It's all right. It'll just be a little bit more. It's all right. It's not going to hurt anybody. No one will ever know. Let me tell you it's a lie because it's from the devil, who's the father of lies. But sin will deceive you. And if you're not careful, sin will defeat you. Galatians 6, chapter 1. Brethren, if any, of you, if any man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one. If you allow sin to deceive you, sin will come into your life and defeat you. If you let it defeat you, it will corrupt you and it will defeat you and you'll be living an unvictorious, defeated life. So many people are doing that today. They don't have joy. Why? They're living a defeated life with sin in their life. If you're not careful, not only will sin deceive you, not only will it defeat you, but sin will destroy you. It'll destroy your life, destroy your relationship with God. Isaiah 59, chapter 1, verse... 59, chapter... Yeah. Isaiah, chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Behold, 
The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, but he will not hear. Let me tell you, friend, not only will sin deceive you, if you're not careful, it'll de defeat you. And if you're not careful, it'll destroy you. But number four, if you're not careful, sin will damn you. That word's in the Bible. It's not a cuss word. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ezekiel 18, 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know why? Do you know why there has to be this punishment for sin? Because God is holy. God cannot allow sin. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. God is holy. God says there must be a punishment for sin, and that punishment can only be you or Jesus Christ. And if you don't, if you choose to reject Jesus Christ, the punishment means you will spend eternity in the lake of fire, as our brother was talking about here. There's no other option. Sin will deceive you, defeat you, destroy you, damn you. you. Say, well, this is a pretty discouraging message. And it would be if I stopped there. But not only do we have the definition of sin where we see we're all sinners. Not only do we have the danger of sin where we know what the problem is with sin. But number three, we have the disillusion of sin or the destruction of sin. Let me tell you tonight, sin deceives, but Jesus is truth. John chapter 14, verse number 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sin will tell you lies, but Jesus will never lie to you. Sin will tell you lies, but let me tell you, Jesus won't. Every promise of his is sure and settled. Not only does sin deceive in Jesus' truth, sin defeats, but Jesus brings victory. Thanks be to God, which giveth up the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. You want victory in life? You're living a defeated life? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He'll give you the victory you need. He'll give you what you're looking for. Sin deceives, but Jesus brings Jesus' is truth. Sin defeats, but Jesus brings victory. Sin destroys, but Jesus builds. John chapter 2, verse number 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He's talking about his body. And with that body, because sin had separated us from God... He would build a new temple inside of us and he'd raise, he would be raised from the dead so we could have a way back to God. He would build that relationship back to God and God demands blood for sin and that's what the cross was there for. Jesus died a horrible, horrible death so we could have our way back to God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be raised the righteousness of God in him. Hebrews chapter 9 verse number 28 So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. 1 Peter 2.24 who himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. Not only all that, but let me tell you, sin will damn you, but Jesus will save you. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus has come, came into the world to save sinners. There was a ladder to get to heaven, but we couldn't climb it because our iniquities separated us. So Jesus came down that ladder so we could go up. Not a physical ladder, it's a metaphorical ladder. Jesus came down and he took us up. It was only him that could take us up. But let me tell you tonight, if you're in here worried, you say, God can never forgive me. God's not concerned about the magnitude of your sin. God's concerned about the condition of your heart. God wants to know, God knows tonight, but are you saved or lost? That's the only way God sees it. And if you're lost, let me tell you, it's only in Jesus Christ. Some of you say, I'm too far gone. No, you're not. You know how I know that? Because the Bible says, whosoever. The Bible says in Romans 10, chapter 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, verse number 17, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life. Freely. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there, there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among heaven, among men, whereby we must be saved. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say, what happens to my sins after that? Well, God says in Hebrews 8, 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Psalm 103, verse number 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 
That's a lost person tonight. Come to Jesus if you want help from your sin. But Christian, are you fooling around in sin? God don't take it as a joke. God don't see it as a little white lie. Can a man go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let me tell you, if you're away from God, God says, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't fool around with God. Come back to Him tonight, won't you? Or come to Him for the first time. Talk to somebody. Get your sins forgiven tonight and get on the right road to heaven. Get on the road to God. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be here this evening. Praise you for it, Lord. Thank you for your blessings and your Holy Spirit, Lord. Praise you for this word, Lord, that you've given to me to go forth. Pray we speak to people's hearts and people come to know Christ from the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Ask on Christ's name. Amen.